My name is Hannah, and this is my beauty budget. So as many, if not all of you already know, last year, 2018, was my no buy year. I will link my no buy year playlist and my introduction video to this year's project in the cards and in the description box so you can get caught up if you need to. The short story is that when I was deciding what to do after my no buy year ended, I realized that I didn't want to jump right back into a free-for-all of consumerism. I wanted to give myself some pretty strict guidelines going forward, so I decided on a budget. My budget is $200 a month, and the categories to which my budget applies are the same categories to which my no-buy applied. The categories are makeup, skincare, clothing, and homewares. So it's nearly the end of January, and I have spent nearly all of my January budget, and in this video I am simply going to tell you what I spent it on. I'm going to tell you what I bought. It should be a good time. But before we start, I have a few little housekeeping items. I am going to also share at the end a few pieces of makeup. I think it's all makeup. Things that I received as gifts that I haven't really had the opportunity to show on my channel. I haven't really gotten a chance to tell you that I have them and I just want you to know. I think you'll be excited. So stay tuned to the end if you would like to see a couple of exciting pieces of makeup that I have acquired recently by means other than purchasing them with my budget. But other than that, I'm just going to tell you what I spent my budget on. I did want to mention that this eye look is one of my go-to looks and I have filmed a demonstration of this look. It's my single shadow all over the lid eyeshadow look using this shadow which is from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. And lastly before we start, <laughs> this is a dress. It's from Rent the Runway. This is what the sleeves look like. This bold of a print, this bold and graphic of a print, is something I likely would not have spent the money on, especially the money that this dress costs because this is an expensive piece, but it's been so fun to have and to wear. I really love the colors and I enjoyed coming up with this warm brown look today to complement the dress. And some of what's on my face is going to be featured in this video. Some of what's on my face is what I bought this month. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The meat of the video. There's one more thing that I was going to mention in the intro that I forgot to mention, and it is this. I had said previously, I can't remember what video it was in, but I said in a video recently that I was going to incorporate the list of items that I've spent my budget on into my monthly check-in, and I have since decided to make those two separate videos. So this is just the video about how I spent my budget. There will be a separate video about how it's going to be on a budget, and then there will be yet another video about the corporate ethics of the companies from which I purchased anything this month. Okay, it's time for the actual meat of the video. So I've separated everything out into categories. I'm not going in chronological order, I'm going through the categories. And I'm starting with clothing. I spent a total of $52.12 on clothing items this month, clothing and accessories. The first bit was just $8.17, and that was overspill when I spent my Aritzia gift card. I did a whole video about this. I think it's called my first shopping trip since my no buy year. The thumbnail says I went to the mall and it was weird, and that's basically the gist. But I went to the mall because I had to exchange something, and then I went to spend the gift card that I exchanged the item for, and I ended up with a balance of $8.17 over what the gift card was worth. So I paid for that out of my budget. And I did want to update you. The coat that I bought with that gift card is amazing. But the pants I ended up returning, the mediums were too big and the smalls were too small. I thought that the mediums would be a perfect fit because I actually own those pants in another colorway. I have dark blue with stripes on the sides and I have the medium in those and they fit perfectly. But for some reason the mediums in black were much too loose in the waist and they sat on my low waist rather than on my high waist, which is what I prefer. That put something like $60 back onto that gift card. So now I still have $60 to spend at Aritzia, but gift cards are separate from my budget, so it's not relevant technically to the contents of this video. I just wanted to update y'all because many of you knew about that whole saga and believed me to be harboring a new pair of pants, which I am not in fact harboring. So the Aritzia gift card overspill accounted for $8.17 of my budget, and then I also bought a pair of sneakers. I replaced my 
old worn out sneakers. I will throw a picture up on the screen. I was lucky enough to find the exact same pair of sneakers in my size on eBay. I spent $43.95 on them. That includes tax. I believe it was free shipping. I've been including shipping costs and tax costs in the accounting for my budget. There might be a little bit of fuzziness here and there, but I'm trying to count all of the money that I had to spend to acquire the item. So the total of money spent on clothes and accessories and things for my closet was $52.12 this month. That is pretty much exactly a quarter of my budget. All right, let's talk about skincare. Skincare was the first thing I started buying. I guess if you count my Clarisonic brush head as skincare. I talked about my Clarisonic brush head purchase also in that video because I bought it on that same faded trip or ill-fated trip to the mall. So that was $29.57. And then I found that it was time to replace my CeraVe night cream. I like the CeraVe Skin Renewing Night Cream and I had gone through a tub of this. So I purchased this from Amazon for around $13. I just have $13 here. It might have been exactly that much. And then the third thing that I decided to purchase with my budget when it came to skincare this month was a vitamin C serum. I still have a good bit of C firma left. I actually replaced my Drunk Elephant C firma way through the year and then a friend gave me an almost full bottle. So I had two opened bottles going at once which means that this bottle, this is the second of the two, has been open for quite a while and it's so dark in color. I can't imagine that the vitamin C is still active in this. It's probably still a perfectly nice serum and I'm actually using it still on my face basically as a thick moisturizing serum. So I am going to use this up but it has gone so dark, it has, I believe, oxidized so much that I had come to believe that I was no longer getting any active vitamin C onto my skin with my skincare routine because I, I didn't think that this product was doing it anymore. You guys really came through with the recommendations for vitamin C serum when I put it out there that I wanted a new one and that I wanted it to be powerful and potent but not too expensive. The recommendations came in thick and fast and I really, really appreciated that. So I feel like there was pretty much equal support for the May Love Glow Maker and for the Timeless Vitamin C Serum. So I looked into those two. I did some research, some reading, and I decided to try the one from Timeless, partly because it's less expensive and I think I found a code online. I think I found someone's code and I ended up only paying $21.85 for it. And I think the May Love was gonna be closer to 30. So that was a factor. My budget was already coming into play, even though this was pretty early in the month and I definitely hadn't spent the majority of my budget yet. I was already aware of how fast it was going. So that was a factor, but I also seemed to read that the Timeless one was kind of a more aggressive serum. I think it's a higher concentration and the May Love is very good also, but a little bit more of a slow roll. And I like aggressive skincare. When it comes to the few active ingredients that I cherish, I really like them to be potent and I don't have sensitive skin. So I decided to risk the Timeless one and I have been absolutely loving it. I don't have it on me because I've been actually keeping it in the fridge. And once I use it up, I will talk about it in my empties. I don't feel like I can really give a review right now except to say that it's pleasant to use, but I'll let you know in a couple of months how it's gone in terms of efficacy. So the total for skincare this month was $64.42, which is well above the roughly $50 that I kind of am counting on spending on skincare every month. When I calculated out the cost of my skincare routine in my skincare video last year, the video called How My No Way Year Changed My Skincare Routine, my new skincare routine should be costing me around $50 a month. So I went over this month on skincare, which hopefully means that I will come in under the $50 mark on skincare in a coming month. Okay, category three. Category is makeup for Hannah's face. I can't believe how much makeup I bought. I mean, it's just one, two, three, it's just five, it's just five things, but after not buying any makeup any month for a year, it, it just seems like a lot. I kind of feel like I overdid it, honestly, when it comes to makeup. I'm, I'm a little bit scandalized at myself. It didn't add up to 
all that much, well, kind of didn't add up to all that much money. Most of you, or if you've been watching me, you already know I bought the NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. This is the one that I got the most recommendations for by far when I let you guys know that I was looking for a stronghold brow gel that is at a drugstore price. And it's okay, it's okay. It's good enough that if I were to run out of my Givenchy gel and I still had some in this tube, I would keep using it until I used it up and then I will I will probably look for something else. I might try the soap brows. Lots of you recommended the soap brows, so I might give that a try. I don't love it though. It just is weaker than my Givenchy one. The thing that is the weirdest and hardest about it to me is that it, it often feels like nothing comes out on the brush and it's brand new. A lot of times I open it, I take the brush out, and it's like, it, it doesn't just look like there's nothing on the brush, it's that there really is pretty much nothing on the brush. And then I have to like dig it in and, and it's like a, it's like what you have to do when a mascara is getting really old and I have to go like pumpy pumpy and scrapey scrapey and then more gets onto the brush. It seems like the brush is like product resistant or something. The brush seems like it's made out of some kind of plastic that repels the the stuff that's in there and it's it's just hard to get the brush to pick up the stuff. If it were holding my eyebrows perfectly, I would be able to put up with the issue of having to dig into the tube to get product out. But it's it's pretty much like a solid C across the board. So, I'm going to keep looking, but it's it's fine for now and it costs $7. So the other thing I bought at NYX is this. I was looking for some kind of eyebrow pencil. And a lot of you recommended NYX. It was probably the most highly recommended, the NYX Micro Brow. I was actually in the NYX store and I was looking and they were all, it was two things. One, they were all quite warm toned. And then the other thing was that the samples of the NYX Micro Brow that they had were so hard. like. It was, maybe they were all dried up because they were samples, but I tried a bunch of different colors. I tried them on my hand. I even tried one or two in my brows and it just felt like I didn't really like the formula. I ended up getting this one, the eyebrow powder pencil. It sucked me in for a couple of reasons. One is that I love a pencil that you can sharpen. I just feel like I can get so much control and precision with a sharpenable pencil. So when I saw that, these aren't very fashionable right now. Nobody really talks about sharpenable eyebrow pencils. Everyone likes the twist up ones. So when I saw it, I was like, ooh, I love a sharpenable pencil for my waterline. Maybe I'll want one for my brows too. And then the other thing that sucked me in about this is the color. It is ash brown and it is a very alluring, ashy, cool brown that I felt would complement my coloring. So I did try it on in the store. I, I could tell that it was a little bit too light for my brows. I bought it anyway. I think that I didn't want to believe that I couldn't find one in the next store that would work and so I was sort of stubbornly trying to get the next best thing, the closest thing. It was a bad decision. <laughs> I'll just put it out there. It was a bad decision. So I used it for a while and I didn't like it at all. The formula is very, very soft and chalky and despite my best efforts and despite my sharpening, it tends to just turn into a smudge of color on the skin behind my brows. It just kind of tints the brows and I don't like that look. It's like, it looks powdery. It looks like a brow powder. And the color is very, very wrong. It looks well with my hair and I could see a world in which someone with my coloring would like this brow pencil. I could see a world in which it would be perfect for someone with my coloring, but that would be someone with my coloring who prefers a lighter brow, whereas I prefer this kind of ashy or darker brow. So it doesn't suit me. I'm definitely going to give this to one of my cousins or maybe to my sister. I'm going to pass it along and I might just go ahead and do that. I don't feel like I need to save this for a declutter so that I can officially declutter it. The next time I mail something to my cousin or my sister, I'm, I'm gonna put this in the package. However, all has not been lost on the brow front because here's something scandalous that I did. I placed an order from ColourPop. Why do I feel like it's scandalous? Because I didn't spend as much at ColourPop as I spent at NYX, for example, but for some reason I feel like it's more scandalous. I think it's because ordering from ColourPop was a very specific subset 
of my addictive behaviors and I think that it can be really really hard to resist and so it was just like woo I haven't done this in over a year and it took me a long time to whittle it down when I ordered from ColourPop, it was getting towards the end of the month. I was highly motivated not to spend too much, and I definitely, definitely, definitely was not planning to spend enough to get free shipping. I went confidently to the site, determined to pay for shipping. I'm not falling for those garbage tactics anymore, ColourPop. So I got two things from ColourPop, and one of them was a brow pencil. This is the ColourPop Brow Boss in Ash Brown, and this is pretty much indistinguishable to me in performance from my old Anastasia Brow Wiz, the product that I will never buy again because it's a short-term staple for me, and that adds up to so much money per year. It's just not worth it. This is fantastic and the color is absolutely perfect for me, the consistency. I really love the little spoolie on the end. This one over here has a big fluffy spoolie, which I thought I liked at the beginning because it was novel, but it contributes to the sort of powdery effect that this product has on the brows. This little precise hard spoolie helps me to kind of separate and place my brows, which is what I like to do with my spare time. At this moment in time, I feel like I won't hesitate to replace this when I run out of it. I feel like I've found the one. Once I go through it, once it's in my empties, we'll find out if that actually continues to be true, but for now I'm, I'm really happy. I've been loving using this. My brows right now are freshly dyed, so that's most of what you see, but I was able to go through with this and just fill in a little patch or two and really even them out and sculpt them out, and they match perfectly. I mean, of course, my brows probably don't match perfectly each other, but this matches perfectly with the color that my brows become when I dye them. And the other thing that I bought from ColourPop is, let's be honest, probably the reason that I actually placed the order. This. This is the Velvet Blur. This is one of the Velvet Blur lipsticks, the new lipsticks that ColourPop just released. And I am intrigued by the formula, but I wouldn't have been so pressed as to order one of these lipsticks just on that premise. The thing that pushed me over the brink was the fact that they have this color in the release and it is one of my favorite colors for lipstick and it's something that I had in the back of my mind to be looking for for reasons that I will now disclose. This is the color California Love and it's what I have on my lips right now. I'm going to give you kind of a beefy swatch because you'll see. I'm actually going to reapply a little bit. I bought this because I was hoping that it would be a color dupe for one of my all-time favorite, if not my all-time favorite lip product, which is NARS Het Low. And the reason that I want a color dupe for this product is that it's a NARS satin lip pencil. And I've realized over the years that as much as I absolutely love the color and I'm constantly reaching for this color to complete looks for which I want kind of like a grungy, neutral, stainy lip. The color's perfect, but the formula is not. The, the NARS Satin Lip Pencil just isn't very tenacious. It's got a slippery finish, and when I apply it to my lips, I don't really feel like I'm rubbing pigment into my lips and, and really coloring them. I feel like I'm putting on a gloss, honestly. I really feel like this is sort of like a gloss that wears away by the time I've walked to work. It's been in the back of my mind for a while to find a color dupe for this that's matte and that's more tenacious. And when I saw this color in this formula, I thought that could be the one. It's, it's matte, it's got that kind of grippy, blurry look to it, or at least those are the claims and that was what made me decide to order it. So there's NARS Het Low next to it, and that is a pretty thick layer of the NARS product. I'm not gonna buff it out right now because it's kind of slimy and it'll get everywhere, but they are very, very, very close. And when it's buffed out and the way that I wear it on my lips, which is more as a stain, or I, I try to wear it that way, the formula doesn't really suit that, but when I buff it out, it, it looks just like this. To me, I look exactly like I'm wearing this tried and true favorite NARS product. It just is a little bit more matte and has a little bit more of that grippy feel. I've been wearing this ColourPop Blur lipstick a lot, the Velvet Blur. 
It's a little more silicone-y than I expected. I feel like that silicone-y finish makes it less tenacious, and so it's not the perfect dream. It didn't fulfill every single dream, but it's been exciting to have it there to reach for and feel like I can achieve the look of the NARS product that I've loved for years, but with a, a finish that I feel like suits me better. And I, I quite enjoy it. I feel like it's a total score. It is what I wanted, even though it's not perfect in every single way. Another weird thing about it is the smell. It, it kind of smells like, like they tried to make it smell a little bit like vanilla, or maybe even coffee, but the chemical undertone is is overwhelming and, and can't be covered up. It's got kind of a strong plasticky Play-Doh crayon-y smell, but it doesn't linger on the lips. It's just, I smell it and it's quite strong when I'm applying it. All right, I think most of you already know this, but I purchased Maybelline Beige Babe. It's the Into Matte, Matte Sensational? It's the matte formula, the Maybelline matte lipstick. I talked a big talk about how I was going to buy Charlotte Tilbury Kim KW to be my Twiggy nude once my no buy year was over. And when it came down to it, that $30 price point, is that how much they cost? Whatever it is, it was too much. I looked at the price tag and I looked at my budget and I was just like, I don't wanna spend that huge percentage of my budget on one lipstick. So one of you did recommend this to me in the comment section when I put out a call for a good Twiggy nude. I kind of forgot to say at that time that I really wanted something very matte. I was looking for that Twiggy nude, but I also wanted it to be a very, very matte lipstick. And that's another thing that kept me from ordering Kim KW. That's a satin formula, and I, I thought that I would always be slightly disappointed with that. So I had already heard the name of this lipstick, and then I looked up Kim KW on Temptalia's dupe tool. You can go in and put in a product, and then it'll bring up everything that's very similar to that and tell you how close of a match it is. So when I duped Kim KW on Temptalia, this came up and I was like, oh yeah, somebody already recommended that to me. And so I went to the CVS near my workplace and I bought it and it has been fantastic. You've seen me, I've been wearing it in almost all of my videos since I got it. So a lot of you have seen this already and, and you know what it is. The color is exactly what I was looking for. I love how matte it is. The formula is a little bit thin and slippy. And the wild thing is I was recently given as a gift a few Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, and one of them is the matte formula. It's Ms. Kensington. I feel like Ms. Kensington is more of a pink coral nude, and Maybelline Beige Babe is really like that beige matte. So they've both been great, and the thing that's shocking to me is that the formula feels the same. I feel like in terms of that thin, slippery, feels very juicy, but looks totally matte, it's like a weird tactile illusion they duped Charlotte Tilbury's gig. Like, they've done it. I don't know which came first, but it, I feel like Maybelline has the same secret that Charlotte Tilbury has when it comes to creating this matte formula that feels soft but looks very matte. I'm really glad that I bought Maybelline Beige Babe. It's probably been my most worn lipstick this month. There is something though that I bought when I was at the drugstore at that same time that I do regret buying, and it's this. It's the L'Oreal Voluminous Original Mascara in Burgundy. It was one of those situations where I bought it because I had filed it away in my mind that I wanted it, and not because I actually wanted it in the moment. I saw it and I was like, oh yeah, I was definitely gonna buy this. And then I bought it because I was definitely going to buy this. And I feel like if I had stopped in that moment and I had said, wait a minute, do you really want this right now? Do you want to go home and put it on your eyelashes? Do you want to open it tomorrow morning? Do you want to wear it every day this week? You know, if I had really checked in with myself and asked if my heart was calling to it and its burgundy heart was calling to me, the answer would have been no. And I also think another thing was happening, which is that it's hard to buy just one thing. And I think I need to make a little mental adjustment in my mind. I need to adjust to relishing the feeling of buying just one thing. I want to be proud when I buy just one thing, just like I was proud when I paid for shipping. Oh, but I forgot to tell you the ColourPop order. 
I had a $5 off coupon. I used Samantha March's coupon. So it was $5 off and I paid shipping. So I ended up kind of getting free shipping anyway using that coupon. So the ColourPop order ended up costing $13.66 altogether. But you know what I'm saying? In the same way that I've adjusted my thinking about free shipping, I need to adjust my thinking about buying only one thing. Because when I was in CVS on that one trip that I took to the drugstore this month, I had this in my hand and I knew I really, really wanted it. And something was keeping me from just going and checking out and buying only it. It was like I was looking for a little companion to it so that I could feel like I had bought stuff rather than just like buying one lipstick. I'm gonna use this. I do like this formula. I'm not against it. and. It has been nice once or twice to do a smoky burgundy look and then finish it with a burgundy mascara. I do enjoy doing that, but I just feel so ho-hum about this. I feel so, so, so about it. And I, I just know it wasn't an inspired purchase. And if I could go back and take it back, I would. So that was six items, all of them drugstore priced, all of them under $10, added up to $45. It took a big bite out of my budget to buy those six drugstore priced items, makeup items. That's almost a quarter of my budget pretty much spent on makeup. And I'm also not totally psyched that I brought six new makeup items into my collection this month. I wish I had had the presence of mind not to buy the burgundy mascara. And I also wish I had had the presence of mind not to buy the NYX brow pencil. Those were both situations in which I was in the store and I think I probably knew in my heart of hearts that I didn't feel totally 100% about buying the thing. And there was some little leftover shred of my compulsive behaviors that drove me to actually make the purchase. I really love that that happened though and I really love that I'm keeping track of it and that I'm reporting back about it to you because I feel like I'm learning how to be a better shopper. I didn't come out of my no buy year as the perfect shopper, as was patently obvious from my video about the first time I went shopping. But because I'm paying such careful attention, both to what I spend and to what I buy, and also to how I feel when I'm going through the process of making decisions about what I buy, I'm able to catch myself in the act of making mistakes pretty quickly, soon after I make the mistakes and in some cases before I make them and I think that that's making me an increasingly smarter shopper at a pretty rapid rate of speed. So I feel like the budget is definitely working in that way, both using a budget and tracking my spending. Okay, so the last two things that I bought with my budget this month are neither of them here. They're both homewares or they're both things I'm considering to be homewares. One was a set of bed suspenders. It's not what you think, I promise. I think they're actually called sheet suspenders, but basically they are straps that go under the bed. They're elasticized and they stretch across underneath the bed and they clip onto the fitted sheet to hold it to the bed. We have a nice fitted sheet. It's linen, we have linen bedding. It's so amazing. But the fitted sheet, it's like just exactly the right size, which means it's not big enough. It's not deep enough. So it goes on when we freshly wash the sheets and we put it on. It goes on and it looks nice and smooth, but then as soon as we get onto the bed, it kind of starts pulling up and messing up. And it's something that's kind of driven me crazy for a long time. And partway through the no buy year, I was like, I need to find some sort of contraption to solve this problem. And then of course I couldn't buy one. So I had to learn to live with it. And I totally was able to live with it. That was a classic example of something during the no buy year that I would have bought that I couldn't buy. And then I just had to make peace with it. But in January, I decided that it was something that I really did want to try to solve by buying a gadget. So I did some research. I found some sheet suspenders. They cost $11.99. I have gotten some questions in the comments about how we account for homewares when they should be a shared expense because there are two of us living in the home and a lot of homewares apply to the both of us. So I have made rules about that. I have 
kind of beefed up the rules about my beauty budget to make sense of that question and I'm going to talk more about that in my actual check-in because that was something that I figured out I needed to do this month and then I actually went through and clarified for myself. And then the other thing that I bought that I consider to be in the category of homewares is a sleep mask, a light blocking mask that I wear over my eyes when I'm sleeping at night to black out the lights so that I can sleep better. And this was a necessity, it was something that I used up the one that I had been using, a nice padded silk one, got so stretched out that there was no way to continue to attach it to my head. I would put it on and then it would just slide off right away as soon as I fell asleep and I would wake up and it would be lost in the bedclothes somewhere. I will actually link, I mean I'll link everything down below obviously, but if you're curious about sleep masks I'll definitely have the link to the one that I bought because I decided to go for it, to go big or go home, and I bought a silk sleep mask that is filled with I think it's buckwheat and then lavender buds so it smells like lavender it's very soothing and it's heavy and kind of cooling on the eyes and it's very plush and secure and I have actually been really 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 loving that it felt like $16.95 very well spent so that was it I only bought two homewares type items with my budget this month and together they added up to $28.94. It's interesting looking at this list to think about the breakdown of splurgy items or unnecessary items and necessary items or replacement type items, utilitarian items I guess you could say. I would say that the sneakers were definitely a utilitarian replacement item even though they are fashion they are also something I really really needed to replace and the brush head for the Clarisonic same thing the Cerave night cream you could technically say I mean it was a replacement it was a staple item so that was very utilitarian yeah it's sort of half utilitarian things half fun things the reason for half fun things is definitely the makeup. I felt like I was mostly buying utilitarian things. And I'll go through the numbers again really quickly. I spent around $52 on clothing and accessories, so clothing accounted for about a quarter of the budget. I spent $64 on skincare type things, so that means skincare was more than a quarter of the budget. Makeup, $45, so makeup was just a tiny bit less than a quarter of the budget, and then the homewares were about $30, so well under a quarter of the budget, and I, I do have $10 left over as some genius out there who does math in her head really fast may have at this point surmised. So the total spent this month was $190.64, and when I think about the handful, what feels like a handful of things that I bought, it's hard for me to believe that I spent $200 on it. And the thing that I've learned from that is just how quickly it all adds up. A little lipstick here, a little brow pencil there, a little bed suspenders here and there, $200, gone. It's amazing. The budget is already teaching me things that the no buy year hadn't taught me. So that is it for the beauty budget, and now I want to show you a few little treats. The Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm. My cousin Mara gave it to me for Christmas and it is so pretty. I will try to work this into a demonstration or give a full review of it or something at some point. When I put it on, you can't really see it from straight on, but when I move my face, you really see it shine. I love that about this. I've been enjoying it quite a lot and I just wanted to let you guys know that that somebody gave it to me for Christmas and that I now own it. I had the Natasha Denona Gold Palette in that stack. Everyone already knows that I got it for Christmas from my sister, but I just wanted to mention it. That's a pretty awesome one, a pretty big one. And then the last one, you guys, this is so magical and bananas, but look at this. This is the Kevin Aquan Neo Highlighter. I got it from Octoly. It came up in my free store on Octoly and I, my jaw hit the floor. Like you should have seen me. I was like, <gasps> Escandalo. So here's my old one and here's the new one. I feel like the packaging is much heavier on the new one, but it might just be because almost all the product is gone from the old one. 
I'm showing you this, well, I just wanted you to know. I wanted you to know that I, I received it as a gift from the brand, essentially. I can finally show you what it looks like when it's intact, because mine is completely broken. I've showed it a number of times. I learned, actually, when I was reading the Octoly listing that these are Kevin Aquan's three highlighters. It's the candlelight glow, the moonlight glow, and the sunlit glow or something. I use it as a glowy bronzer or kind of a glowy blush because it's not a super highlighting highlighter. And I've been just touting the magic of this as a bronzer for pale skinned people for the whole time that I've had my channel, like for well over a year. And so I was just ecstatic when I saw that this was available on Octoly and when the brand agreed to send it to me. So I wanted to share that with you guys. I wasn't gonna buy it until I totally panned this one, just this little bit right here. And the bit that's still there is very, very thin. And actually it's getting to the point where it's hard to pick up the lighter color because there's only this little side left that's light in color and I go in with a big fluffy brush and I've been noticing lately that when I go into this product to get that kind of light glowy flush across my face it ends up a little bit darker than I wanted. I am going to try to use the whole thing up but I think what I will probably do is go ahead and start using this one and start using the lighter side and then I'm going to continue to pan this one as a bronzer. That was what made me decide to actually accept that from Octoly because I have learned recently that I really really don't like having backups and to me it is a little bit weird to have two of the same but they are so different like what the pans contain is so different and I'm so excited to start using this and to have that lighter side again that it doesn't feel like a backup to me. That is it. Those are the three things I wanted to show you that have come into my life recently even though I didn't buy them with my budget. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below and don't forget to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.